If you start too early in the supercompensation window, you are working in the recovery zone. Welcome to the channel guys. I am Bhaven, your host. I'm an engineer by profession and a certified personal trainer and a sports nutritionist by passion. The third most common mistake people do is not paying attention to recovery, right? Um, it is only natural, uh, especially when you're seeing results, right? Uh, it is human tendency to think the more the better. I was guilty of the same. Uh, back in college, when I was in IIT, uh, we used to work out um, six times uh, in a week and sometimes two times in a day. And I'm pretty sure if the gym was open on Sunday, we, we would have worked out seven days in the whole week, right? So I hope after watching this video, um, you understand the importance of recovery and don't do the mistakes which I did and take your recovery as seriously as your training and nutrition. So what happens when you work out, when you put the muscle under stress, right? Um, you put it under a lot of stress, it goes into exhaustion. So it is natural for the body's survival. It, it's, it's the survival technique of the body to fight this onslaught or to fight this torture uh, next time when you do the workout by becoming stronger or by becoming bigger. This is called uh, adaptation. Right? And this is why the muscle grows. Right? In sports science, this phenomenon is explained by a principle called supercompensation. Right? So immediately after you work out, right, within one to two hours, your body goes into a state of uh, catabolism or it goes into a catabolic state, which means breakdown. Right? Uh, different physiological uh, changes happen in your body. Your Cortisol level goes up, your lactic acid builds up, your glycogen goes down. So uh, this is within one to two hours after the workout, right? That's why if I, if you are, if you just completed an intense one to two hours of workout, and I ask you to go to the gym again to perform a workout, you probably won't be able to do the workout because the body is in a catabolic state, right? Let's call it phase one. Within this phase one. Um, there is also uh, another uh, uh, physiological change happens in the body, right? Uh, this is, uh, this happens within uh, 24 hours after the workout. So this is actually uh, the muscular damage, right? In scientific term, this is your um, mycotrauma to your uh, musculature, which is in simple terms basically means the breakdown micro breakdown of the muscle tissues. This is important uh, because this is required for adaptation. Okay, This is what causes the soreness of the muscle like one or two days after you work out, which is also known as uh, delayed onset of muscle soreness, more commonly known as domes in sports science. The next phase, phase two, is called the recovery phase. Right? This is a very important phase because during this phase, uh, the body is recovering the entire system uh, of your body, the <clears throat> endocrine system, your central nervous system and your muscular system is trying to bounce back and come back stronger, right? So this phase lasts up to, can last anywhere up to 24 to 48 hours. The next phase is phase three, where the body recovers to its uh, initial level of performance and fitness. So before you did the workout, you had uh, a level uh, for your performance and fitness and then in this phase after going through the uh, initial stimulus for exercise and degradation in performance and after the recovery the body will bounce and reach to its original phase so this is phase three and this can last anywhere uh, between 36 to 72 hours the final phase or phase four is is what is called the supercompensation phase this is a very interesting phase um, because uh, at this phase, the body 
uh, after it has recovered and uh, gone through phase three, bounce back to a state where uh, your performance or your fitness is at a super compensated level or which means that the, the level is much more higher than your initial fitness level. Okay. The super compensation phase or phase four can last anywhere from three to seven days. The concept looks simple, but it is not. This super compensation window, it doesn't last for too long. Okay. So if you don't perform your workout, okay, in this window, you will miss your super compensation window. So when you don't do anything, okay, uh, to the muscle group or you don't work out, your body will slowly return from the super compensated state, it will slowly return to this uh, original fitness level. And then if you still don't do anything, it will probably even go down, okay? So this is why basically uh, you, when you go to the gym after a long break, you cannot lift the same weight we, which you used to lift before because your performance in a fitness level is down. Uh, similarly, if you keep on going uh, to the gym and uh, keep on working in this super compensation window, your lifts keeps on going higher and higher, bigger and bigger. Okay. Um, timing of this, timing of your workout uh, around the super compensation window and the recovery window is, is very, very important because if you uh, start too late, you miss the super compensation window. If you start too early than the super compensation window, you are working in the recovery zone okay so what you're basically doing is as the body is recovering you're putting it in another training stimulus and, uh, and if you keep on doing it you know you are on a downhill of you are in a downward trend okay and this is what is overtraining. so when you're trying to recover um, we have to recover from two main types uh, two main types of fatigue one is your uh, cns fatigue which is the central nervous system fatigue and uh, other one is the muscular fatigue. So these are the primarily two types of fatigue uh, which you need to recover before you uh, start before you start training the muscle group again. Central nervous system fatigue is uh, something very um, hard to explain. But if it's a very but if you're a very experienced uh, lifter, uh, you will be able to point out uh, when you are having a CNS failure. Okay. Uh, muscular failure is when you have muscle soreness, uh, you know, because of the workout. Uh, CNS failure primarily happens because of uh, decrease in the firing capacity of your neurons. So basically your brain is tired, the central nervous system is tired. So you are not, the neurons, your brain, the signals which the brain say, sends to the muscle to contract, uh, those uh, signals are not uh, adequately uh, sent to the muscle. So when you have uh, less uh, uh, less signal sense, the recruitment, less number of your motor units are recruited, so your muscle activation is less, right? Compound exercises like uh, deadlift, heavy squats, if you perform that uh, exercises like this, very intense, uh, chances of CNS failures are higher. Uh, so you will have to keep an eye on your um, body's mechanism system to understand if you're having a CNS failure. One good way to uh, understand whether you have a, if you are having a CNS fatigue is a decrease in coordination. Okay, um, if you don't feel the mind to muscle connection, right? Um, most probably you are having a CNS failure. Okay, um, if you don't feel the muscle, uh, which or in the exercises which you have been doing from before with proper form and uh, exercise, and you don't seem to be recruiting the muscle enough, uh, you know it's um, it's time for rest or recovery, right? Because you're having a CNS failure. So there is no fixed number of days for rest, right? So for some people, some people need two two days in a week. Some people need three days in a week. Um, you really need to listen to your body's feedback mechanism, right? To understand when you need to rest, right? So for me personally, uh, my performance in the gym goes down if I work, if I work out consecutively for four days, right? Uh, on the fourth day, I, can def I don't feel I'm really fatigued. 
I don't feel the muscle connection. So that's, that's my limit, right? So I, I make it a point that I never work out on the fourth consecutive day. Sometimes I make it on the third day, right? Depending on uh, how I feel, right? Because if sometimes the workload is high or you have done like back and legs continuously on two consecutive days and you have gone like really heavy and intense on those sets. These are very um, high intense body part exercises. Then I take a rest on the third day. It really depends on uh, person to person. Uh, also don't forget the nutrition on the rest day, right? Nutritions are very, very important. You know, it needs the right amount of nutrients um, and hydration to be able to grow. So don't forget the nutrition, give it the correct, give it adequate amount of nutrition and hydration while you are in the rest to let your muscles grow and uh, you are fresh and ready to kill the next workout, right? Sleep, uh, your work lifestyle and mental well-being are other aspects which you need to be careful about when considering recovery. In fact, mental well-being is uh, something which is not very uh, talked about in uh, in bodybuilding, but this is a very important aspect because if your mind is mind is not in the right space, your body is not going to perform in the optimum level. I have seen people whose performance in the gym going down, and uh, they have they tend to hold a lot more water uh, when they are not in the right mental space, right? So uh, to be able to perform optimum in the gym, your mind needs to be in the right space. So be aware of this, especially if you're taking performance enhancing drugs because a lot of hormonal changes happen in the body and uh, if you're not careful, uh, your mind can be all over the place, right? All in all, recovery is very individual and it largely depends on the person's lifestyle and his ability to handle stress. By now it must be clear to you that uh, recovery is not just about taking rest, but it can be used as a tool uh, to springboard your performance and fitness to the next level, as we have seen in the super compensation uh, principle, right? So don't just rest, rest smart. So that's it for today. In the next episode, we're gonna discuss about something very interesting, which is uh, following common programs or following the masses. So keep watching, we'll be back in episode number four.